In this video, we will use the refine model to create a categorical model. This is useful for where the volumes themselves have not been created for only the domain you want to code. In other words, they overlap each other as they were created independently. For example, if you were classifying deposit or using depletion volumes that had been extrapolated out, and it was just expected then that you would sort out the coding on the block model. In this example here, I've created some very crude indicated meshes for the two domains that I've estimated. So as you can see that they actually just overlap each other. And because these domains are so close, if I just use these as they were on the geological model, I wouldn't get the coding right. So the way to do it is to refine the geological model and then you can independently code each domain with the relevant meshes. So first let's make a copy of the geological model because when you do a refined model it's going to do it in situ on that model and I don't necessarily want this model completely refined. So copy... I'm just going to keep it as the GM copy. And then come back up to the geological model folder and select new refined model. Select the model to refine, which is my copy model. The lithology I want to refine. So I've got the granodiorite and the quartz porphyry estimated. So I'll start the granodiorite. Then the base lithology column will be none because we want to add our own coding. We don't want to use the coding from the drill holes. And then I will just call this the classification model. So you can see it's created the object for the granodiorite. So now I need to come into lithologies and add the classifications I want to use. So I only have the indicated wireframe, so I'm just going to have indicated and inferred. So I need to add those two. Inferred and indicated. When I come to surface chronology, new intrusion, because it's a volume from surface. This is the granodiorite first. My first lithology will be indicated and my second lithology will be inferred. I need to activate that. Come to the output volumes. You can see indicated and inferred. Next, we'll do the quartz porphyry. So I come back here, refine lithology, quartz porphyry, base lithology of none. I need to add in the indicated and food again. So I can now use that coding. Surface chronology, new intrusion from surface. Select the quartz porphyry indicated mesh. First lithology indicated, second lithology inferred. Activate. So now I should also have the indicated and inferred for the quartz porphyry. And now I just need to evaluate this onto my block model. I'll take the classification model that I've made, evaluate that on. I can just check that's coded correctly, classification model. Everything off except that looks correct. So now I can make a resource report using my classification. Classification AU. I have to tell it the units. Now I've got the invalid values because they are blocks that don't have an estimate. So I can get rid of those just by creating the cutoff. I'll deselect 
the units I don't want to report because I haven't estimated into them. That's all these strut ones from the original coding. And now I'm going to group these because I want in indicated and inferred together. Indicated and then inferred. Let's switch these off. Turn that to doesn't try answers. So now I have it coded by indicated and inferred for my report, which is great. And then I can also use the pit um, filter that I had already created. So in the calculations and filters here, it was the pit model I've evaluated onto my block model, and this is just inside the pit. So I can use that. Now this is ready for me to copy and paste into Excel or Word. I hope you found that tip useful. If you have any questions, please contact your local sequent office.